Hey guys, welcome in. Chit Chat Tuesday from Onboard Sky Princess. Hope you guys are here. I don't know if I timed this right. <laughs> we are currently in a time change. I'm in Roatan, Honduras. So we are an hour behind our normal time, but not sure if I scheduled it right in YouTube. So I hope you guys got the alert. I hope you guys are coming over. Um, I think I might be an hour early. I'm not sure though. Let me know for sure. Welcome in, Jonathan. Thank you for being here. Appreciate you guys being here. Hopefully everyone's getting the notifications now. I'll wait a little bit, but I'm currently on board Sky Princess and I thought I would come live for Chit Chat Tuesday. I haven't come live in a while um, for Chit Chat Tuesday. I've gone live on the ship, but not just talk to you guys for a little bit. Uh, let's see. So did the, you guys get the alert? <laughs> I was so worried that I scheduled it for the wrong time because it's technically six o'clock right here where I am. Um, it's seven o'clock back home. So I wanted to do it. And do I look orange? <laughs> It's been a long day. Let me see if I can adjust my lighting. I feel like I look orange. Is that better or is that worse? Oh, well, you guys are gonna get whatever it is today, but welcome in. Um, happy Tuesday to you, Jonathan. Let's see here. Welcome in Cynthia and Shay's Adventures. Thank you for being here. Miss Bree Brizzle, welcome in, welcome in. Charlene, good evening to you. Hope you're doing well. Uh, hope you guys can hear me okay. I'm kind of tucked off in a corner. I don't like the way this lights look, hold on. Is that better? You guys can tell I don't do this all the time. I wasn't sure if it was going to be too dark in this little nook. I think that's better. I wasn't sure if it was going to be too dark. I'm sitting actually in the photo lab on Sky Princess. They have like these little booths um, that have like a TV screen or what have you, but it's it's like off from all of the crowd. So um, right now the photographers are doing, you know, the nightly photo. So it was empty. I'm like, hey, I'm going to go there and do my live stream rather than staying in the cabin. Um, and I didn't want to go out like in a public public space because because I've been getting a lot of stares. I don't think there's a lot of uh, content creators or vloggers that come on Princess Cruises because anytime I take my camera out, like people are like really staring. So it's kind of strange. So I was like, ah, oh, let me just tuck off a little bit. But everyone thinks I'm filming them and I'm like, I'm not filming you. <laughs> so uh, let's see, uh, Maria, greetings from Las Vegas. Welcome in, welcome in. Yep, Charlene from, oh, we have two Charlenes. Char two Charlene Peas. Welcome in, uh, Charlene from Indianapolis. Appreciate you being here. Ellis McKinley, thank you for being here. Thank you so much, uh, Nick and Don. Appreciate you guys always supporting. Cynthia says she did get the alert, so thank you so much for letting me know that. I was nervous I had the wrong time. Angelita says, hello all, welcome in, Angelita. Yep, alert came through. Thank you, Jay Jazzy. Rotan Honduras. I was there about 20 years ago. Still have my t-shirt. You sound like Ron still having your t-shirt 20 years later. Yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful day in Rotan. But my day did not go as planned. Um, I won't share a whole lot because I'll save it for the vlogs. But since you guys, guys, is it getting, the lighting is changing, right? Do I look darker now? Anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, it was my plans. My tour that I originally had planned didn't go as scheduled because so... We have four ports for this cruise. Three of them, hold on, three of them were booked either with Princess Cruises or um, Resort for a Day sponsored me in Cozumel. And then I'm working with Yaya Beach Club in Costa Maya. Um, so I scheduled another third party shore excursion through Shore Excursioneer, which I've never had an issue with. Um, so I scheduled, I was supposed to go see the sloths, monkeys, um, snorkeling from a boat, and then to Brady's K, which is like a little private island, private beach. Um, that was the plan. Um, walked out of the port to catch my tour, and I see a guy holding up a sign. I'm not going to say he looks sketchy or anything, but he was holding up a sign. And I walked up and I said, um, I think I'm on your tour. And he knew me by name. And I'm like... Like, how do you know me by name? And he said, well, you're the only person on my tour. And I'm like, I'm the only person on your tour. Like, there's no one else in the bus or van. And he was like, nope, just me and you. I'm like, uh, that's no. I'm like, no, I don't. I didn't want to offend him. So I was like, yeah, my husband probably wouldn't like me, you know, just riding around in a foreign place with someone. So I'll probably have to pass. So he kept, like, hounding me, like, no, come on, come on. We're going to have a great day. We're going to have a good time. And he was like, I'm going to go pick up the, I'm going to go pick up the van um, the van is like a three, four minute walk away. He said, just wait here. I'll come, I'll come pick you up. So I was like, okay. 
as soon as as soon as he left, I left too. There was no way I was going with him on my own. Now there were other people on the tour, and guys, this is a tip for those of you who are solo traveler, solo cruisers. Don't get in a taxi. Don't get in a van or go on a tour on your own. Um, I'm an introvert, so I probably wouldn't even talk to the people on the tour, you know, so much. But it's just that comfort of having other people with you. Um, that awkwardness of being with someone in a foreign place, like that wasn't happening. So long story short is um, the same people that um, hassled me coming through the terminal, guys, they are extremely aggressive here. I know you guys probably hear about uh, Nassau being like this. It's totally different here. Like literally, as soon as you step foot out of the gate, there's a line of vendors. My tour guide said there's over 200 tour guides in uh, Roatan, um, different companies. And some are just like really small mom plus. So I'm assuming the one that Short Excursion Year linked me to was one of the smaller ones. Not that I don't mind supporting a small business, but I don't want to be the only one. And so, um, yeah, long story short is I went back to the same people that I felt they were kind of hounding me to try to get a tour. And I booked a tour and I had one other person with me. Um, so, yes, my day didn't go as planned and I didn't get to do what I wanted to do, but it was still good. It was still good. And that happens when you when you cruise, when you travel. Uh, Drina Maddox, welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Maria. I appreciate it. Um, Angela says, hello, Raquel. You sound great. Good internet. That's good to know. The internet has been really, really good on this ship. Um, really no complaints. I mean, I've been working and the benefit is that I have Princess Premier, which includes Wi-Fi and it gives you four devices and I'm connected to three. So I've been working this cruise um, when I'm not vlogging and participating in things. So um, yeah, I'm connected to three devices and it's lovely. They do have the Starlink, which is the new internet for um, cruise ships. Uh, Shay's Adventures, thank you, thank you. Uh, my cruising family, welcome in. Thank you for being here, appreciate it. Miss Penny, good evening. Kelly, Angel Tony, welcome in. Uh, Maria's letting me know the audio is good, awesome. Sig the Solar Cruiser, welcome in, welcome in. Ray, thank you for coming in. Uh, Diane, thank you for coming in, joining us from Facebook. Uh, Jaretha Parker, uh, welcome in. Thea Wilson, Sig says, oh, that's good to know about Princess. I'll be careful when I sail. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I ha I don't tend to have issues booking third-party tours, and I do that a lot of times, even when I cruise solo. But no, there was no way I was going with him by myself. And I, I don't like to judge people off their looks, but he did look a little sketchy to me. And I, I just the feeling, you know, you get a feeling. I had a feeling. I'm like, no, mm -mm. but he was like, yeah, come on, come on, we're gonna have a good time. I'm um, just me and you. I'm like, so when he said I'm gonna get the van, that was my quick out. When he left and he turned the corner. I ran back into the <laughs> into the port, <laughs> and it was funny because then the the company messaged me, and they said, um, "We understand that uh, the driver went to get the car and you left." Um, so I paid a deposit of the way short excursioneer works is you pay a deposit and then you pay the rest when you um, get to the tour. So I paid like sixteen dollars, and I owed like forty dollars I think on arrival, and. Um, pretty much said like I wasn't getting a refund. And I just told her, I said, hey, I just didn't feel comfortable um, going solo. I did respond and I said, hey, I told him that I didn't feel comfortable. He was, you know, pretty persistent. And I could have probably just walked away, but you know, it was an awkward moment. So welcome in Team Reese Travels. Thank you so much. And thank you for redirecting people over to our live stream. I appreciate that. Uh, the lighting looks perfect. Guys, I don't ever use lights. But I, I thought this was really dark here. So I was like, oh, let me just pull out a light. But I don't look, I look orange now. Uh, Crystal Sparkle, welcome in, welcome in. Oh, Cruise Craze fam, thank you so much for subscribing. We really appreciate the support. Our goal is to hit 20K by June 1st. That is that is our goal. It's an aggressive goal, but we're going to get there because things have been really moving quickly here. Tonight is just popping. I'm so happy I can watch YouTube lives again. I've been struggling in February. I lost my hearing in live. And closed caption is not a thing. I'm so sorry to hear that, Crystal, but I'm glad that you're here. Yeah, the closed captioning on the live streams, I think once they're published on YouTube, like we can go into the settings and add closed captioning. But I don't know if there's a way to have the closed captioning on when you're actually live. I'll have to research that, but I think someone else had mentioned that at one point. And when I did, there wasn't an option. But I think once it's posted, as long as that is a setting that is selected, it can be there. But I hope you're doing better. Welcome in, Gloria. Appreciate you being here. See it with C. Thank you so much for being here. 
Um, my cruise and family said, nope, not an unexpected one-to-one -one tour. No. No, and I'll do a one-to-one -one tour in a place that I feel more comfortable with. Um, this was only my second time to Rotan. And the first time I was docked at the Mahogany Bay area. And um, this time we were in Coxon, Coxon, uh, Coxon Hole um, is where we were. Um, it, like, it's a nice area. I love being able to see how the locals live. So when I was able to ride through the town or what have you. Um, but yeah, there was no way I was going one-to-one. -one. Yeah, in a van. In a van. A white van at that. So, nah. <laughs> Crystal says run away. Yeah, I did. I didn't. And, and <laughs> it was kind of funny because I was afraid that he was going to come back because he could tell that I was like, yeah. So when I was going back, you know, you have to show your ID or whatever. I was like like rushing to get back through the gate trying to find my id and i couldn't find it the guy was like oh all you need is your lanyard so i just showed him my lanyard and i was good but yeah i didn't run away um cindy says nope uh cruise craze family says hi from melbourne uh australia we're well, welcome and i appreciate you guys i've been following your content as well so thank you for coming over uh, maria says yikes yes what are your thoughts about the kids cruising on this brand um good question so i will be posting a tour of the kids and teens kids and teens club now let me just say this there aren't a whole lot of kids on the sailing um when you go to the kids clubs they will they have like a chart outside each door that shows how many kids are at least registered for the kids clubs teens club and they have it by age um when i checked on day one one of the kids clubs only had like 30 kids and this was the younger the younger um kids club they had like 30 kids to put it in perspective, if you go on like Carnival or Rook Ribbon, you're going to have 200 or more kids on a sailing going to the kids' clubs. Um, they spread them out, of course, but yeah, there aren't many. Now, also, this time of year, it's not quite spring break, so that could have an impact on things. But um, I personally think our kids would like Princess. I could see where it's not for all kids. Um, now, the Sun Princess that is coming out, it's, it just set sail. It's actually on its first sailing right now. It's over um, in the Mediterranean. The Sun Princess was actually designed with families in mind because that's something that princess, overall, I mean, they don't really attract families as much um, or younger, younger kids. And so this ship was designed with families in mind where they have like an actual section with like a ropes course and like golf and you know, just fun things that you would normally find on ships. This ship has no, and this is a newer princess ship that I'm on. It has no water slides, has no water park. It has nothing, but it has like three pools. Two of the pools are adults only. So that kind of gives you an idea. But the kids clubs, teen, teens clubs, they seem very nice. Um, they have planned activities. So yes, I would say it is, It's it wouldn't be my top pick for families, but I do think um, it could work. Oh, hold on, I think I have a visitor coming in. Hold on one second. Let's see how, how I do this. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Ron wanted to pop in. Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Can you see me? You can't hear. So I think that's your setting. I'll let you figure out your setting. He wanted to pop in. <laughs> so like, let me send you the link and i told him i said if you can't get the link to work don't be calling me because you're going to disrupt my my live stream i'm having a drink y'all can you hear me now you can't hear me i think it's one of your settings so guys this is a watermelon drink if you guys watch my um crown princess series they have a spicy watermelon margarita. This isn't quite that, but that is my favorite drink of all times. Can you hear? I can, can hear you now. Me? Can't hear you though. Well, I don't know. Can you guys hear them? I guess I shouldn't hear you, but let me see if they can hear you. Can you guys hear him? Everyone's saying hi to Ron. Hello, hello. Let me go back through some of these comments. It says, I'm like, but did you speak about airport distance? Oh. Um, airport distance from, I don't even know where I docked out of. <laughs> where did I? Should I be able to hear Ron? I don't know. I don't ever invite people onto the live streams. That's Are okay. You talking? I, no. No, I can't can, hear you. Can anyone hear me? 
any of my other content creators who do um who who are on Streamlabs or was it Melanat? Let me know how I can hear. I can't hear you. Let's see if they can hear you. Um they said they can hear you. I just can't hear you. Oh, okay. Oh, hold on. Maybe I have to turn my volume up. Now talk. I was just going to say, I'm glad oh, you didn't. You. <laughs> okay. It was all me. <laughs> so there's, there's two things that you won't do. You won't get in a van with a stranger in a foreign country. <laughs> and you won't be on stage at an Usher concert and dance with him. <laughs> Other than that, because yeah, I have no rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> but welcome good. in. He wanted to join in. You guys know he's missing yes. me. Uh, yes. This is a seven day cruise is a long time. And normally I do like four or five day cruises away from the family. So the seven days is, is kind of long. And we still have, what, three full days to go. Um, yes. But someone asked, oh, Karen asked about the airport distance. I had to think about where I flew into. Uh, this was out of Fort Lauderdale. The cruise terminal Fort Lauderdale is like 10 minutes to the terminal. So I waited longer for the Uber than it took to get, actually get to the airport. So, so yeah, let me see. I'm trying to go back to the comments. So yeah, it's not far at all, but yeah, we are talking to somebody just asked about Margaritaville. We will talk about Margaritaville here in a second. Happy you got your hearing back. Yes. Uh, Julia says, nope, wouldn't do it. Mm -mm. Yeah, there are almost 50 people in live. Let's get those likes up. Thank you so much, Crystal. We're up to 90 people watching. I appreciate you guys being here. Yes, that would make me feel uncomfortable as well. It's something if something happens even unintentionally, no one would know. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing about Rotan too is like reception. Normally I have good cellular reception wherever I am. Um, but this port, I just did not. Like I don't even think I was able to talk to Ron until I got to the beach, which guys, if you've ever been to West Bay. Um, in Roatan, I do not recommend it for solo cruisers or those with families. Guys, they had vendors up and down the beach. I felt like there were more vendors. Oh, there we go. I don't know. I think I pushed a button. Sorry, trying to trying to go through this chat. <laughs> yep, no, I didn't lose internet. I didn't lose internet. I'm sorry. I think I have to scroll on my phone. I probably should start bringing my iPad so I have that to look at too. Um, I think I was pushing a button. But um, let's see. What was I saying? Oh, so West Bay. West Bay was, it just, I mean, they were in, like they would not stop. They were giving massages. They were doing, it was just like every two minutes, somebody was walking up trying to sell. And that's all they did up and down the beach. So I, I personally did not, I didn't even get in the water um, because I felt uncomfortable leaving my, sometimes, you know, I don't really carry valuables with me, but um, sometimes I'll go, I'm trying to angle my camera. Um, sometimes I'll go to a beach and I'll feel comfortable being able to watch my bag while I'm in the water, just kind of face it when I'm by myself. I didn't feel comfortable at all. So that is not a beach I would recommend. Um, Denise, welcome in. I missed your comment. Thanks for being here. Um, hold on. I lost all the I lost all the comments. Let's see. Welcome in, Tony from Facebook. Appreciate you being here. Uh, let's see. How is Margaritaville cruising? Charlie, welcome in. Thank you for being here. I haven't heard great things about the ship. We'll get to that in a couple of minutes. Uh, Crystal says, me too. I haven't edited, I haven't edited vlogs or really posted in a while, but I got my hearing back with medication and rest. That's awesome. Yeah, Daniel Johnson's monkey and salt hangout on Rotan is awesome. It is. I think that was the one we went to the first time. This one, this time I went to a different one. The lighting is great. Your skin is glowing. Thank you. I think it looked orange, but welcome in, Michelle. Joe Linda, welcome in. Together we travel, satin jazz lady. Hello to everybody. Um, I can attest you are working and your internet is good. Yes, Legacia, thank you. 
Uh, <laughs> see what C says, creep. Yeah, go with your gut. And he probably had good intentions, but the guys, the people there, they were hustling, trying to get you on their tours. I just, if there were other people, I would have gone. I just, no, no. Michelle says, I know you've been working. Yes. <laughs> Your intuition knows. Absolutely. All right. Let's see. You ran and left him, Hagen? Yes, I did. Because he wasn't taking no for an answer. So, and, and had, and had he, like, if he was parked right there, I don't know. I probably would have let him get in, close his door, and then I would have ran. <laughs> but it's like I was telling him, no, like I don't feel comfortable. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to seem weak by saying I don't feel comfortable. I was like, hey, my husband's not gonna be up for that. He's just not, mm -mm, I can't, I can't go off by myself. But he wasn't that, getting that. I'm sorry, Who's where perfect? are you where where are you at now talking about going off by yourself? Hmm? Huh? Where are you located right now? I'm on the ship. In a different country by yourself. Mm -hmm. Now that's different than me going in a white van by myself. <laughs> Cruz Cray <laughs> Fam says, I thought I was subscribed. I don't know how and why I wasn't been following for years. Guys, YouTube is up to games. They unsubscribe people. So I had just announced that we hit 16,000. I think when I posted it was 16,001. Mm -hmm. And then I think that evening got up to like 16,010. Woke up the next morning. It was 15,999. So like what in the world? So it's like you start hitting these milestones and YouTube just starts unsubscribing people. I don't know. And I get people telling me all the time, hey, I'm not subscribed anymore. So yeah, so if you are watching, please double check that you're subscribed. Danette Gibson, welcome in. Good evening from Fort Lauderdale. Oh, Julia says you can do the closed captioning. That's awesome. Uh, Florence, welcome in. Says, can't believe I caught my first live. Yes. Well, welcome in, Florence. I appreciate you. Uh, says, tuning in from Australia. Awesome. Uh, let me see. I think I've already read some of these comments. This is my first time saying hi. Welcome in, Trish. Appreciate you saying hi. Uh, Ronelda, welcome in. Welcome in. Team Reese says, I've heard good things about their Kids Club. Excited to see your content on that. Yeah, I've heard nothing but good things about the Kids Club. It's just the other things around the ship. Like if you have really young kids, like when you look, because I'm very intentional to look at the app to see what they have that's more for families. And this ship, guys, they have knitting. They have Bible study. They have, um, I mean, they have a lot of fun things. They have games. They have The Voice um, where you can audition. They do two nights of auditions. And then the third night, they actually had the competition. Now, I didn't stay up late enough for that, um, but I will plan to try to record the competition. Um, so they have a lot of fun activities, but a lot of them aren't things that I think kids are really into, but it sounds like Sun Princess, they're going to incorporate more of those fun family things. Now they have like game time, game shows, uh, they had a juggler, those types of things, but, but it's a different, it's a different crowd. Uh, welcome in Jill from Savannah. Appreciate you being here. Seem shy, kid friendly. Um, yeah, it's, it's. I, would, I wouldn't say this ship is necessarily kid-friendly. I think kids could come on and be fine, as long as they're not kids that have to have the water park, have to have a splash pad or a water slide. They do have a small arcade. Um, it's really small, but they have a small arcade. But again, Sun Princess is going to be the game changer. And we are booked on um, the U.S. and our row for Sun Princess. So, um, yeah, so we'll be bringing you guys that content. Welcome in, Gloria, from Getaways with Gloria. Appreciate you being here. Everyone's speaking to Ron. All right, we're going to get into Margaritaville at sea. Yeah, this is a watermelon drink. Yeah, it's really good. Now, guys, the food and drink, and I know I'm supposed to be talking Margaritaville, <laughs> but the food and drink on the ship has been amazing. It really has. So I will, Princess, really, their food is good. Their drinks are good. Um, I, I really have no complaints. I don't think I, hey, do I have any complaints yet? No, we had pot pies for dinner tonight, though. Did you? Pot yes. pies or pot pies? Pot pies. You didn't leave us no budget money for pot pies. <laughs> <laughs> but enjoy your you know drink. Joe likes her extra biscuits, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> extra biscuits with honey. Mm -hmm. um, oh, see, she says, I guess you can't hear each other. Yeah, we're good now. All right, let me scroll through. All right, so if you guys have any questions about Margaritaville at Sea, feel free to ask. I just felt like I needed to come on and talk about it because I got off that sailing about two weeks ago. And since then I've done MSC Magnifica. 
Now I've done Sky Princess, and I don't want it to kind of get left at the wayside by not coming back to talk about it or to answer questions you might have about Margaritaville at sea. My first vlog for that very short series is coming out Friday, I'm hoping. Um, I've been working, trying to edit and working, trying to get through quotes and booking people and things like that. I'm hoping I have it done by Friday. So that's the plan. If not, I'll let you guys know. But if you have questions about Margarita Villette, please let me know. I just wanted to make sure that I did touch on that. Um, let's see here. What was your Just overall from... thought about Margarita Villex? Welcome in, Phil and Dee. Appreciate you guys being here. My overall feel, I didn't see a problem with it. And I know that is so controversial because people, there's probably more negative reviews than there are positive reviews about Margarita Villex. See, and guys, also give you full context. Um, I was completely sponsored, hosted by Margarita Villex. See. I always have to put that out there, but it does not change my views, my opinion on what happened. So um, they invited me out. They actually invited the family out to um, give it a test run. We were booked twice on Margaret Let's See. The first time, being very honest, very transparent, I canceled after Travel Spree's video went viral where, baby, you know which video I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that video went viral where they were just showing like how, um, like how nasty, dirty, nasty ship. I've done old ships, but the ships are clean. It's, I can do an old ship. I just can't do a dirty ship. And so after seeing that, I literally canceled the booking. Um, fast forward to probably almost a year later, I think. Um, yeah. This past December, I was going to go do a quick, I hadn't done a mother-daughter cruise with Joe Marie. And I was like, well, they underwent their dry dock. I you know, hearing better things about them. Had some friends get on board. Uh, Sig the Solo Cruiser was on board. Uh, Parker's on the go. See it with C. Carlene. So there were some other content creators that had been on board that seemed to have a really good experience. And so I was like, ah, maybe we'll give it a try. So we booked two day sailing, me and Joe, but it wind up, we had some issues because of weather. And so you guys know it's a two day sailing and they were going to have us because the sailing before us wind up turning into a five night cruise because of weather going on in South Florida and near the Bahamas. And so they were like, well, you guys can still cruise, but you're not going to be able to board until 6 p.m. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense because we're only going to be on at 6 p.m., go to bed, go to Freeport and then get off. So I was like, no, I want a full day. So we canceled that, got on Carnival Conquest. Fast forward again. Um, I guess Margaritaville at Sea must have been looking at my... Um, Instagram or whatever, they reached out to say, hey, we'd like to invite you guys on to test it out. Um, you know, what dates work? So I kind of, because it's a two-day sailing, I wanted to make sure that it worked for, I wanted to attach it to another cruise because it doesn't make sense to fly from Ohio down there for a two-day cruise or what have you. So that's kind of how that went. Um, so that it was fully covered, fully paid by Margaret Velsi, but again, it does not change my thoughts and opinions, and you'll see that in the vlog. Um, and, and they also, whenever I was communicating with them about what they wanted me to highlight or show or whatever, they were like, hey, you know, highlight, show whatever you want to show. We want this to be your genuine, honest thoughts, opinion. And that's what you have. So. Well, that was nice um, of them. Yeah. Well, it's not nice of them. That's how it should be. I feel like sometimes people think that content creators, now there are some that, you know, get sponsored or have these, you know, things paid for and that they're really gaslighting the cruise line and I'll tell you what's good I'll tell you what's not but you also have to remember that it's my opinion my thoughts so I might say this was great somebody else might say it's not I might say this was terrible somebody else is gonna love it so take what I say with a grain of salt um but overall I didn't see a problem with Margarita Villette um there were a couple of things I will get into but um, well, let me just talk about the bad. Well, should I talk about the bad first or the good? I would start off with the best thing that you found on Margaritaville at sea, okay. which is something that you <laughs> talked about today. Yeah. Danette just said, what ship is this? I'm currently on Sky Princess, but I'm talking about Margaritaville at sea. So I'm on Sky Princess is one of Princess Cruise's newer ships. So, um, so the one thing that really stood out for me um was the food i expected the food guys the food to me was better than carnival so i'll just say that um and i'm speaking more so about the dining room 
Um, I had the night that I was, so they, you know, you're only going to dine in the dining room twice. Uh, they have one night that's Caribbean night. And I think the second night was Italian night and I didn't go. Um, so the Caribbean night, they had like gumbo, they had jerk chicken, they had, you know, jambalaya, they had plantains, they had, you know, Caribbean style food or I guess Cajun too. And I had the gumbo. It wasn't really a gumbo to me. And I say this in the vlog, it was more like an etouffee. So if you're familiar with etouffee and versus gumbo, like I, for me, gumbo is like a dark, deep room. This was very light, but it had great flavor. It was really good. It was spicy. Then I had like a jerk chicken. It didn't look appetizing. Um, I'm funny about cruise ship chicken. It didn't look appetizing, but it was flavorful. And the beans and rice were good too. Um, had no complaints about food the first night. Where the food fell short for me was like the breakfast buffet. Um, they did have a made for um, a made to order omelet station, which was good. But like I, the food was kind of for breakfast was more like hotel food. So I mean, they had like your eggs, bacon, sausage, uh, you know, yogurts, pastries, this and that. But for me, it felt kind of like a hotel, not not like a days in, but more like a. I don't know, comfort in. Does that make sense? Or Motel 6 to a comfort in. Not to shade any of those because we stay at comfort in, but that's what I'm thinking. Um, so there were some options that were good, but there were some things that just I didn't care for. But again, that's my thought. That's what I felt. The omelet was delicious, so I would recommend doing the omelet. Um, they also had a place called um, Cheeseburgers in Paradise, which is just basic cheeseburgers, fries it was just that it was basic burgers and fries wasn't bad it wasn't the best it wasn't a guy's burger but it was good it was something to eat it was good um they so had you, you, you think the menu was the dining room menu was better than emerald's new menu on carnival um i don't know i don't know if i can say that because i've tried a lot more on emerald's new menu than i have on Margaritaville. I only ate at Margaritaville. And that's the thing, guys. We're talking a two-night sailing. So once we get on their longer sailings, which we will be on one, you get an idea, a better picture of things. I can only speak on that one night that I had food in the dining room. That could have just been a fluke. Who knows? But um, I can't say that it's better than or that it's not better than because I only had it once. Okay. Um, um, what else? So yeah, the food was good. I would say overall the food was good. There was a couple places that were up charges. So they had a pizza place called Frank's and Lola's. And that specialty pizza was probably some of the best pizza I've had at sea. Now it's reasonably priced. It was like $14.99. You got um, a large pizza, which of course I couldn't eat at all. I was trying to give people pizza. Um, it was delicious. It really was. I can tell you what it than the Alfredo they had on this ship. So Princess Cruises has Alfredo, which is an upcharge, but if you have Princess Premier, it's included. Um, Margaritaville at Sea's Pizza was better. They also have, um, before you working. Oh, does it look like that? It does look like you're working. Guys, he's working. Sorry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you off the screen. <laughs> he's like, I've already heard this stuff before. You wanted to come on this live stream. You need to focus. <laughs> this is true. He has like three screens. I know he's looking at one of the other screens. Um, what else? Food. Oh, so I had, there's also like a champagne brunch, champagne breakfast um, that you can, it's an upcharge, it's $25. And again, Margaritaville paid for, you know, me to ha experience these things. Um, that was pretty good. Now, would I pay $25 for brunch? Probably not. It was good, but for me, it wasn't worth $25. So like, I'm thinking like if our whole family was there, we would have paid $125 for this brunch. It wasn't worth that. But I would say I would probably pay maybe $10, $15 for that. But it was it was tasty. It was good. Um, let me go through some of these comments real quick. And if you guys have any specific questions about Margaritaville, see, please ask. Um, Kat and Kay says, will you have a group cruise on Sun Princess? I'm looking into your seashore cruise. Yeah, if you're looking into the seashore cruise, I only have a couple more cabins left, and I have to close it off because final payment is due in less than a month. 
Um, so if you want to get on MSCC Shore, I think I have three cabins left. Um, send me a message. But yeah, um, Sun Princess, we don't have a uh, an official group cruise, but I do have group space available. We will be on the U.S. inaugural sailing of Sun Princess October 14th through the 19th. And we may be on it before then because Princess is, um, well, hopefully Princess is going to invite us to the media event uh, before that set sail here in the U.S. But we'll be on board for the 14th through the 19th. And I have probably nine cabins already booked, nine, 10 cabins already booked within the group space. This is not a group cruise. We will not have like group meetups or anything like that. It's just a discount rate if you want to get on Sun Princess. You'll probably see us. We might even have dinner together, but it's not an official group cruise. Um, welcome in, Shamika. Thank you for being here. Uh, you guys are saying that you lost me, but we're back. It's just me pushing buttons. That's it. Uh, see, what says, Ron, what did you get the kids for dinner? Yep, the Popeyes. <laughs> Um, cat and cases. I did West Bay Beach at Infinity Bay. Thankfully, no vendors bothering us. Well, maybe it makes a difference if you're at a resort, but they were all over the place. Welcome in, Adrian. Thank you for being here. Uh, Jennifer says, We wanted to try Margaretville, but afraid the kids will be like, Where have you taken us? You know, the cruise was so fast that you really don't even have time to think about where you are. They had like nonstop, so this was another positive. They had nonstop activity. So if you're a person that doesn't like a party vibe or, you know, a fast paced cruise, it's extremely fast. They had, you know, of course your sail away party. They had bingo. They had nightly shows, which I thought the shows were really good. Um, for me, they were better than Carnival. Um, and maybe that's because I've seen Carnival shows so many times. I can sing the songs. I know them all. I know the dance moves. I felt like the shows were better than Carnival's. Um, some people would say that the shows are kind of high schoolish, but I also think Carnival's shows are kind of high schoolish. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like nonstop activities. They have live bands performing throughout the ship. Um, they have like uh, line dance classes. So whatever you might see on other cruise ships, they have it, but they pack it into two days. Um, now, the one thing to know is the second day you're in Freeport. If you decide to stay on the ship and not take a tour, there's not as many activities. So it's like they wait until people get back on board and then they ramp up the activities. And it's like back-to-back -back karaoke, bingo, uh, shows, this and that, what have you. So I would say to get the best experience, unless you're just one that wants to sit in a lounge and drink and you know go to the pool or what have you, um, which the pool is kind of small, it's an older ship. I would say book an excursion in Freeport, not stay on the ship because there's not a whole lot planned during port time. Um, but yeah, they had nonstop, the nonstop. The drinks were amazing. The drinks were amazing. So I had, so they don't have like an unlimited drink package. They have, um, forgot what it's called, but there's like a package that's 10 drinks for $9.99, or for $9.99, 10 drinks for $99. You can share that with whoever's in your cabin, like me. I, I think I only had like three a day maybe, but I had, what did I have? So I had 15 drinks. I had the premium drink package. So um, with the premium drink package, I think you can get drinks up to twenty dollars. I might be wrong with that, but if you get the the ninety nine dollar drinks, then it's up to twelve dollars or something like that. But I had premium drinks. Um, every drink that I had was good. My favorite was the pink Cadillac. I think that's what it was called. That was really good. So and guys, it's Margaritaville at sea for a reason. I mean, margaritas. I love margaritas. Um, I didn't have one watered down drink. Everything was good. Um, what else? Michelle says, thanks for teaching us so much. You're welcome. Can you do your travel agents thing for internationals like us looking to come to the States next year? Um, do you mean, can I book if you're outside of the US? I booked um, Canada. I, I, I'm pretty sure I can. I just have not booked um, other people internationally. Uh, see, it was, he says YouTube is a mess. Yeah. Yeah, they do. They play around. Welcome in, um, Shervon. Hey, Mrs. Parker. You guys be sure to go subscribe to Hey, Mrs. Parker. If you guys follow Parker's on the go, um, Shervon has a new channel where she's going to be sharing stuff, you know, just like lifestyle, travel, travel agent, 
um, thing. So be sure to check her out and subscribe. Let's get her. I think you're working on getting to 100 right now. Let's make sure we're subscribed there. Um, Jolinda says, yep, same here. I was unsubscribed as well. It is so crazy that YouTube does that. I don't know why they do that, but they do. Uh, let's see. Yep, they said unsubscribe me every week, Miss Gloria says. Yeah, I don't know. Are you using your phone to live stream? I am. I am. The Wi-Fi on the ship is really good. Welcome in, HBCU um, Talk. Hello, hello. Welcome in. Um, thank you, Wanda, for upgrading your channel membership. Really appreciate that. Carol says, good evening. Just got back from the Disney Dream. I hope you had a good time. We we enjoyed Disney Dream. Now, we didn't enjoy it enough to go back on Disney and pay those prices, but yeah, Disney Dream. Uh, HBC says, love your content. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see. Uh, Rachel, welcome in. Appreciate you being here. Uh, is it Long Neck Dino Man? Dino? Dino? Dino. Dino Man. <laughs> My mother loves to watch your videos. Well, tell your mother thank you. Sugar says I had to resubscribe again. It's I don't, I don't know. It's so weird. Miss Bree Brizzle says this Margaritaville has specialty dining. Now they do have a steakhouse. I refuse to eat at the steakhouse. Um, I had funds provided through, and guys, this is how you know I'm keeping it real. So Margaritaville, pretty much like I could have had or done whatever I wanted, but I'm the type that. If it's something that I'm not going to do myself, I'm not going to do it with your money because that's just not right. And so the steakhouse, babe, how much did I say that was? Like $65? An extra. Yeah, so it was it was $65 was the cover charge for the steakhouse. Now, keep in mind, most cruise lines, it's about $50. Um, and guys, speaking of steakhouse, the steakhouse on this ship, it's $39 if you don't have Princess Premier. And it's the best steakhouse that I've had on out at sea. You, um, you need to focus on margarita. I know. I'm thinking because I haven't had dinner yet, so I'm thinking if I could try to squeeze in there tonight. <laughs> but no, the steakhouse on Margarita Villa at sea. I want to say the cover charge is sixty five dollars a person. When you look at the menu, this is where because I went to go schedule the steakhouse. I thought sixty five dollars was steep, but I was like, ah, I guess I'll just try it and see if it's worth it. Maybe maybe there's something there that I don't know. So I get there to the reservation and I see the menu. So when I house, I almost all order a ribeye. The ribeye had a dollar search. That's the guys. So this is on top of the $65. And he's yes. He was like, we could just out. We could just like, if you don't want this, we'll just give you the ribeye. And I said, no, we for everyone. Because I do, I do believe that Margaritaville either sent my picture out or <laughs> did something. Uh, the social media team, whoever, they did something because everybody in the ship knew me. And I didn't want any special treatment, no special privileges. And I'm like, would you do this for somebody else? Would If they came over and they asked, you know, about the surcharge, would you swap it out easily? And he was like, um, yeah, I didn't believe him, so I didn't eat there. Um, so yeah, so there is specialty dining, the steakhouse, um, you have the steakhouse and then you have the, um, sorry, you have the steakhouse and then you have the pizza shop. Now the pizza shop was excellent. Frank and Lola's and Frank and Lola's, you could dine, it might've been like $24 for a couple or for two people where you get a large pizza, you get appetizer and dessert for $24. That is a great deal. Some people will say, why would I pay that when I can go on Carnival and get free pizza? Well, this wasn't Carnival's free pizza. This wasn't uh, Sorrento's. It wasn't Royal Caribbean's free pizza. It was really good pizza. Um, so it's worth it. And you have to think about the cost you're paying for your cruise. There's going to be upcharges. So I think that's a big complaint that people say about, uh, sorry, guys, somebody's staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's not, it's, not, it's not the person that was trying to pick you up in the white van, is it? <laughs> no, but he did he did he did a David Ruffin. He was like looking. And he's looking that he went. And he like tipped his head. That's what he... mm -hmm. For for those who don't that's... know, David Ruffin is our dog. Yeah, David Ruffin's our dog. <laughs> so that's what he reminded me of. He was like staring at me and then he like mm, like what is she doing? <laughs> Anyways, I forgot what I was. What was I talking about? 
I, 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 he was wrapping up the steakhouse. Um, so yeah, so one of the big complaints people have about Margaritaville at Steve is that you that people feel like they're nickel and dime. And what you have to think about the cost you're paying for this cruise. Like you're gonna have to pay a little extra if you want to have a I shouldn't say to have a better time because you don't have to have the specialty dining. You don't, it's two days. I mean, you don't have to do any of that. Um, you could eat in the main dining room and you're great. They have buffet for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can eat there um and be fine. But um the, for me, the steakhouse at $65 a pop was not. That wasn't happening, and that wasn't even my own money. I wasn't doing it. Um, Sig says, I didn't have an overall issue with it either. Things weren't perfect, but I would do it again. I absolutely would too. Are there balcony rooms on Margaretville at sea? There aren't. There are no balconies. Um, there are a couple suites. Oh gosh, sorry guys, my neck hurts. Um, there are a couple of suites. I don't think they have balconies though. I don't think they have balconies. There's just a couple of suites. Um, oh, Rachel says, I was worried about the upkeep of the ship. Now, I do know, based on some videos that I've seen in the past, that yes, the ship probably wasn't upkept to what it should have been. But after their um, dry dock in, I think it was June, maybe, they definitely cleaned it up because I didn't, I have a thing with like, I don't want to be there if it's not clean. I was afraid that it was going to smell on the ship. Guys, I've smelled, I've smelled some things on ships. I didn't smell anything on the ship. Um, I was afraid that it was going to feel nasty and dirty, and I didn't feel that. It felt very clean. Yes, the cabin is old. Yes, the ship is old. But old doesn't mean dirty. And I think people sometimes intertwine thinking if it's old, it's dirty. And I don't think that that was the case. I don't think it was dirty at all. I felt like it was cleaner than some ships that I've been on. Um, and you, you also yeah, said it was I, more spacious, your cabin. Yeah, the cabins. Yeah, the cabins. I feel like that's the case for a lot of the older ships. The cabins seem, seem to be a little bit larger. So I felt like this cabin was, um, I had an ocean view, was a lot more spacious than your standard cabin. But yeah, no issues with the upkeep. Um, but again, it does, it's an old ship and it shows its age but not in a way that you're going to walk away like disgusted or feeling, you know. Um, so, so yeah, I didn't, I didn't have a problem with it. I honestly liked the size of the ship because I had just gotten off Icon of the Seas and I've been on some really large ships. So it, for me, to be able to walk from one end to the next in two minutes, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. Um, HBCU says, what market would you recommend take this cruise? Um, I would say if you just want a weekend getaway, you like to drink, party, have fun. Um, I would not recommend it for like, um, like if you're going on a honeymoon or an engagement, um, I wouldn't because it doesn't give you that luxurious feel, I guess. Um, it is what it is. It's a, it's a party ship. Um, some people will say it's a ferry to the Bahamas and that's kind of what it is, which doesn't make it a bad thing. And if you don't know this, you can actually catch Margaritaville at sea to Freeport and stay a few days at a resort there and then come back. So you don't have to do a two-day cruise. You could enjoy the cruise, stay in Freeport for a few days, and then get back on the ship. So it kind of sort of is a ferry. Um, at first, I wasn't sure if Margaritaville at sea would be good for first-time cruisers. I personally think you need to have at least three days as a first-time cruiser to get a real feel for things. But I could see this working for some first-time cruisers. And I'm thinking some first-time cruisers that are just looking for a good time. I would not recommend this for, um, you know, a 60-year-old looking to wine and dine. No, I would not. But if you're a 30-year-old couple or friends just trying to have a good time, absolutely. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily market it for families either. Not to say they're not family-friendly because they are. This particular ship does not have anything as far as like water slides, splash area, nothing like that. It does have a couple of pools and there were quite a few kids on the sailing. They do have the kids club and I want to correct myself because in my last live stream about Margaritaville at Sea, I mentioned about there being a charge for the kids club. That is no longer the case. So the kids clubs are included. At one point, Margaritaville at Sea was charging like $15 or something per day or 
I don't know how it worked, but they were charging at one point. They're no longer charging. Kids clubs, teens clubs are free. Now I can say this. Every time I walked past the teens club, there was no one in there. Um, when I walked past the kids club, there might've been four or five kids. So now their new ship, um, Margaritaville at Sea Islander, I think it's going to attract a lot more families, a lot more kids because it has some of those amenities. I think this one even has water slides. Um, so it's a old Costa ship that's being, you know, they're adding on some things. So I do think that this ship is going to attract more families. So I would probably market that ship to families, you know, people wanting those longer cruises because it's going to operate three to five nights, three to six nights. Um, we're going to we have our on, kids test it out too. Yeah, we're going to be on the US and our girl for this sailing. Um, so super excited to bring that content as well. Welcome in on the go with yellow. Appreciate you being here. Um, Belinda says we call that multitasking. Yep. Uh, Danielle, welcome in. Welcome in. Welcome in. Just Kai, I appreciate you being here. I hope you guys are hitting that like button for me. I really do appreciate it. Um, somebody said, I bet Margarita let see made sure everything was good for you since you, you are a YouTuber. I don't, I don't, I don't fully buy that. I do think though, like with the guy at the steakhouse that he was trying to accommodate because you know, of course they want me to put out, um, you know, positive vibes about it. But at no point did I feel like they were just going above and beyond for that. But I do think that they did know that, you know, I was a content creator or what have you. Um, but just in speaking with people that were on the ship and they all had the same kind of experience that I did. So I don't feel like they made everything good for me. I mean, the food's going to be what it's going to be, regardless if it's for me or for whoever. The drinks are going to be, all of those things were good. The entertainment was good. They didn't make it special for me. Welcome in, G Fox. Um, Team Reese's, that lobster looked phenomenal. It was. And now I'm like, okay, maybe I can squeeze that <laughs> reservation. Um, uh, just Kaya says, I'm late. Would you take your kids on Margaritaville? They will be on the new sailing in June. So we will be, we will be on the first sailing as long as that first sailing happens. And those of you that, um, I have a couple of clients on here that I messaged earlier. If you guys don't know, Utopia of the Seas, Royal Caribbean has changed. It's an inaugural sailing. I'm not pleased about it. So, um, and actually check out, see it with C. Curling, she just did a live stream before this talking about it. So we were booked. We're still booked. I don't know what we're going to do. So sidebar, Utopia of the Seas is Royal Caribbean's new ship that's setting sail. It's an Oasis class ship. It's setting sail, was setting sail June, July 22nd. We're booked on the inaugural. Got a letter today. Um, for me and all of my clients that are booked on it saying they've now moved the inaugural to July 19th because the ship is going to be ready sooner than they expected. So what they're offering is they're saying, hey, you can move your four-day sailing to this new inaugural cruise, which is just three days, you know, no extra charge, which why would you charge more for a three-day cruise? But you can move your sailing. We're going to I guess twenty five percent off because they're gonna they're gonna take they're gonna prorate the days because now you're only three days. They're gonna get you in the same cabin. So the new sailing is not open for public yet. They're moving people that want to get moved right into their same cabin for the inaugural. But the issue is, like for us, we you know the summer is our busy cruising season. So we had like four cruises almost back to back. So now that this change has happened, we're on a cruise when the inaugural starts. So I'm like, well, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna cancel that cruise for this in our inaugural. Um, so it's like, okay, do I stay on the second sailing? My whole intention would be to go on the inaugural to, you know, get content, push that content out. Um, and this would be the whole family this time. Now I am hoping that we do get an invite to um, the media event or preview sailing like we did for Icon of the Sea. So that would be a, that would be a perk is if we get invited again. Um, Icon series did pretty okay. So I'm hoping Royal Caribbean's watching and they're able to give us an invite. But as of now, I don't know what we're gonna do. Um, and Royal Caribbean is saying, I contacted them. I'm like, well, what if I decide to cancel this sailing? They said, you'll be penalized because I booked under a non-refundable deposit. And I said, well, I only booked this with the intention of this being the inaugural cruise. So now that you've changed that, you should honor a cancellation. 
well, I think they pushed that letter out too quickly that they didn't think through some of those things. Like I booked this because it was the inaugural. So now you need to give me the option to cancel or something. The other issue that I'm having is that they haven't discounted that July 22nd sailing, which was the original inaugural. And if you guys know anything, the inaugural cruises have a premium. So it's like, are you being slick by charging us this premium for this now non-inaugural cruise? And now you're going to do the same thing for the three-day? Or are you going to come back and discount those that are on the four-day sailing? So we're kind of at the point where if they come back and say, yeah, we're going to discount the four-day sailing, we might stay on it. But if they come back and say, nope, the price you book is the price you pay or what have you, then no, we're canceling and I want my money back. So that's the sidebar um, for those of you who weren't aware. That was a long sidebar. I know, but I was a little irritated because I have several clients on the inaugural um, and Drew has a friend that um, he cruised with when we cruised Mardi Gras years ago. And we were hoping that they would be able to reconnect. And I don't know if that's going to happen now because I just refuse to pay the price that we're booked at, which I know you're going to ask me what it is. I'm not telling you. Um, <laughs> I refuse to pay that price knowing that it's not the inaugural anymore. Like, that doesn't make sense. So we'll see. Uh, it says, please tell Cheryl I said hello. I think she's so cool, real, and super funny. I will. And actually, the cruise that I'm not canceling to get on the the new inaugural is a cruise with Cheryl. It's um, Life with V, if you guys know Veronica, she's having a, a group cruise, so we're booked on that one. Welcome in, Travel Vibes with Angel. Appreciate you being here. Um, says, hopefully I will be cruising uh, Margaritaville in April or May. I love the ship when it was Bahamas Paradise. Yeah, yep, I remember you mentioning that. Would you say it's worth flying there for a three-day cruise? Um. It depends on the flight costs. Like, I have flown to places for a three-day cruise. It's not my preferred thing now. No, definitely not for a two-day cruise. Yeah, I would not fly for a two-day cruise, even if it was my $25, $30 flight. It's just not worth the hassle for me. But to add it on to another cruise, yes. But if you live in the area that's drivable or what have you, then yeah. Right now, it's a two-day cruise. But the new ship actually... Um, Margarita Valetsi Paradise will also be doing three-day cruises here soon, but the new ship, the Islander, will be doing three to five, maybe six nights, I have to recall. Welcome in, Jane. Thank you for being here. Uh, Travel Vibe says, it's definitely a party cruise. Their entertainment is good also. I remember cruising with this comedian from Comic View. We ate dinner together. He was really friendly. Yeah, and they had comedy shows. Guys, whatever. They had, what's it called? Quest, the adult-only show Quest. So whatever you see on the other cruise lines, they have it on Margaritaville at sea. It's just com compacted into the two nights. Go book the trip. Welcome in. I appreciate you being here. Hello, I made it to a live. Welcome in. Uh, Wallace uh, Travel says hello, everyone. Welcome in, Amelia. Thank you so much. Welcome in, Anthony. Um, on the go, Gillis says, oh, wow, I have not heard. That's how I felt about Star when they moved in on a real date. Yeah. I think the difference, though, with, in, uh, with Star, that they... They did it shortly after releasing the dates. So it wasn't like, like we're looking at four months away, three, four months away for the inaugural for, for Utopia. And now that changes, you know, some people already have flights and things. So yeah, we'll figure it out. But they need to allow people to cancel the ones that were booked on the inaugural, not just say we can move you to the three night because the three night doesn't work for me now because I'm, I'll be on another cruise. And yeah, I don't want to feel forced to pay that price knowing now that it's not the inaugural. Welcome in, Brian. Appreciate it. Um, I agree. Oh, yeah. Back to, <laughs> back to Margarita. I'm just... Sorry guys, I keep pushing that. I keep pushing that button. Um, what did I miss about Margaritaville? Did I miss I anything? I don't we know. Talked if the you food. Necessarily... Yeah, we talked the food. We talked the we entertainment. Talk... We talked the drinks. Uh, the cabin was uh, clean. The, the oh, the issues, the, the issues that I had. So these uh -huh. are probably my biggest complaints about Margaritaville. Let's see. And again, I said everything was not perfect. My biggest complaint 
was that there was never enough water in this toilet. And this sounds disgusting. There so that was kind of, and I don't off the ship, like the water levels were low. Um, that was a little kind of disgusting, you know, because you got to flush multiple times. Um, yeah, I would have so left that. that. Probably, I wouldn't have mentioned that. Well, I mean, why not? Because it sounds gross, but you need to know that. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to sugar or shake coat it, I mean, right? <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> Welcome in, Charles. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't. The the toilets need more water. So, but the, the funny thing is, the water pressure in the shower was great. So I don't know if it's something with the water pressure or what, but that to me was a little off putting. Um, other things. What else did I say? The app. There's no app. So with Margaritaville at Sea, with Margaritaville at Sea, you have to book everything. Like your excursions, your specialty dining, internet, all of that. You have to book it when you book it um, on the website because there's no website to go back to to log in. Like how Carnival, you create a profile or Royal Caribbean and you have an app and you can add stuff. It's not like that with Margaritaville at Sea. Now, I do hope with this new ship that they're going to add those things on. But if you book your cruise and don't add an excursion, you have to call in to add on the excursion or add on the great package or add on whatever or you can do it when you get on the ship. Now I have to give them props on this. I didn't notice a markup on had online was the pricing on the ship, which is good. And but, um, so there's no app. So when you get on, they're gonna give you a paper for the two days that have all the activities. And then they're gonna give you a link to like margaritavillec.com and it has like that current sailing where you can like screenshot and then see the activity. So I didn't like that because I'm the type, I need that alert reminder. So if I bookmark it or whatever, I want to be able to, you know, 10, 15 minutes before say, oh, you're supposed to be at bingo. You're supposed to be here. That didn't happen. So I had to constantly look at my phone to find the screenshot to see what was going on. So didn't really care for that. Um, so yeah, the toilets, um, the app, there was something else. There were three things. Do How was the, the casino? Um, the casino, I didn't really play in there long. Um, so, oh, the so casino, you played? I did briefly. Um, so the casino, you have to get a separate. Oh, the casino's cash only. So that was something that some people may not like. Um, <laughs> the casino is cash only. You have to register for the Margaritaville at sea, like casino players card or whatever. And then you stick that in the machine and you have to put cash. So um, there were some people on the ship that didn't know that. Like they were sitting near me and they were like, oh, I would have brought cash had I known I could just use my room key. Um, the other thing that I didn't like about Margaritaville at sea. Oh, Brandy says, I'm on Margaritaville right now. Well, how are you liking it, Brandy? Um, Anthony says, Carnival was generous for Jubilee. And we took advantage of what they were offering. We didn't get back on Jubilee, but they were still offering us uh, really um, <laughs> on the go with you. So keep it real. Shalon says, I may have missed it, but will their new should be two night sailings or more? They're going to be doing three to five nights. I think six nights. Um, so the new ship is not two nights. I thought one of the options was a full refund. No, there's no full refund on Utopia. Um, yeah, no. You can either, Utopia, you can move it to the new inaugural without an additional charge, um, or you can remain on the sailing. And yeah, that was pretty much it. So there's no full refund option. You either stay on the sailing or you move it to that particular sailing. It wasn't even like you can move it to another sailing. It was no, move it to the inaugural, and then you fill out the form, what have you. So yeah, no, no full refund as of yet. But I'm sure people are going to raise some saying about that. What was I saying, though, Ben? You were talking about how much time and money you spent at the casino. Uh-huh. <laughs> there was something else. Oh, something else to know about Margaritaville at sea. If you have onboard credit, 
onboard credit cannot go toward casino, bingo, mm -hmm. but it can't go toward casino, bingo, gratuities, but you still pay gratuities on Margaritaville at sea that's not factored into your pricing. Um, so sometimes their promotions will come with onboard credit. You cannot use it for that. So make sure you use your onboard credit. Another thing is they add on a $30 fuel surcharge. What I um, their surcharge. So that's on top of your cruise cost. So you pay X dollars for your cruise and you still get that surcharge. Um, so keep that in mind. And they have the right to increase or decrease that surcharge. And that is written into your um, terms and conditions. Now, as far as pricing for Margarita Let's See, I think the pricing that I see generally is decent. Just think you're going to pay on average about $400 for two people. That's that's the average price because they always run specials. They do have um, um, like hero sale free where if you're a nurse, healthcare worker, teacher, firefighter, policeman, what have you, you can, they say cruise for free, but guys, nothing's free. Their free means your cruise fare, expenses, gratuities, and So there's only like $99 a person or less. So you're really, for the um, hero sale free, you're only saving a few dollars. You're paying more in taxes, fees, port expenses, gratuities, fuel surcharge than you are of the cruise fare. So keep that in mind. Uh, Yadi says, that's crazy. I'm not on Utopia till October. Yeah. Says, it's okay for a 48-hour cruise to Bahamas, but I... Uh, live in Miami, Florida, so I don't mind. Yeah, if you live nearby, if we live nearby, I would probably um, do um, sail on it again. So, all right, any last questions, guys? Because I have a show. It's actually seven seven o'clock here now. We have a show at seven thirty, so I'm going to try to get to this show and then grab dinner. Um, any last questions about Margaritaville? I know it's awkward me being on Sky Princess. Um, just kind of recap Margaritaville. I think it's been two weeks and I haven't had a chance to talk to you guys. Yeah. Questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to get ready to head to the show and then to dinner. Babe, did I capture everything for Margaritaville? Let's see. Yeah. Uh, uh, embarkation process. Was it easy onboarding and offboarding? Um. I can't really say because I did I did have VIP and guys that actually surprised me because when I I was filming and you'll see it in the vlog I was filming and I always film going up the escalator went up the escalator there's a lady standing at the top of it with my name and I was like oh like I was not expecting this this special treatment and they escorted me on the ship I didn't have to wait in line so I can't say what that process looks like because they gave me a little bit of special treatment there which I off the ship was a breeze. I will say this, there was a long line getting off the ship. Um, a pro tip would be to use the forward elevators because what was happening is people were using the midship and yeah, the midship elevators. And it was like a long line going all the way down the deck. Whereas if you did the front um, elevators, those people literally just walked from where the elevators were right to where the line was. They didn't go all the way to the back. So. Um, the people that had VIP passes or express passes went through uh, security faster. The issue, though, is, is that they don't have a designated VIP or express section on the ship for you to go to to get off first. You still get in line with the masses, and then the express or VIP doesn't happen until you get in the terminal, which I thought was a little strange. It's like if I'm express or VIP, you need to say, okay, well, you meet in this lounge at 7 a.m., and we get you off the ship first. That's not how they did it. It was VIP Express, just get in line. And then your VIP Express, once you get into the terminal, to go to customs. And they only had two customs workers. So it was quick for me, but I can imagine that it took time for others. All right. Brandy says, yep, and I'm a nurse. Yeah. Thank you, Angela. All right. It doesn't sound like you guys have any other questions about Margaretville at Sea. My plan is to have that first vlog. I'm only going to have two vlogs for that series. I plan to have that out. Um, hopefully Friday, that's the plan. 
I'm also going to have a full ship tour for my route out sea. I don't tend to do ship tours, but this was such a small ship. I'm like, hey, why not? So I uh, will have a ship tour. And then we're moving on to MSC Magnifica, which overall I had a good time on MSC Magnifica. But there are some quirks that you guys will find in the vlog. And then we'll move right into Sky Princess. Um, next cruise, I'm on this ship for another three or four days. Um, so I probably will go live again at some point. I think I'm going to try this TikTok vertical um, out. We'll see how that works. Like, not TikTok vertical, YouTube vertical um, to go live sometime. And then in two weeks, our family's actually cruising um, for spring break. So stay tuned for that. But, um, babe, thanks for, for popping in, although you were working. Yeah, and when are you coming home? I'll be home Saturday. And do you do you need a ride? <laughs> you know, you and David Ruffin will be at the airport waiting for me. Yes, we will. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, please hit that like button for us. We appreciate you guys tuning yes. in. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get to the show, and we will uh, talk to you guys later. All right, babe. I'll call you in a little bit. All right. Thank all right, you all. Good night, everyone. Bye. See you. Good ya. night.